In this part, we are going to study the carbon-13 NMR applied to copolymers, in especially polyolefins. We are going to see how to determine the type and the amount of branches in polyolefins, the commonomer distribution in the polymer chain, that means the sequences of comonomers, the monomer sequence length, and monomer reactivity radius. When we have two monomers, A and B, and they are copolymerized, they can combine in different sequences. There are three possible sequences for the dyads, AA, AB plus BA, and BB. Many times to simplify the asymmetric dyad is written only AB, but we must have in mind that this is the sum of the two. The possible triads are six. Three are centered in monomer A, AA, A, B, A, A, plus A, A, B, and B, A, B. And three centered in monomer B. B, 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 A, B, B, plus B, B, A, and A, B, A. The same simplification done for the asymmetric dyads sometimes is made by the asymmetric triads. In a decoupled carbon-13 NMR, each type of carbon gives a peak with a determined chemical shift in PPM. In a quantitative NMR, each peak integral gives information about the number of carbons of this type in the sample. So those are the main parameters that can be extracted from a spectrum the chemical shift, and the integrals. From them, we can obtain the triad sequences of a copolymer. For example, in an ethylene-propylene copolymer, where the ethylene unit is represented by E and the propylene unit by P, there exist six possible triads, or what is the same, six combinations of three units. There are three triads centered in E and three triads centered in P. In the example showed here, we can see a triad PEP of an ethylene propylene copolymer. The tri triad sequence can also give us information about how many units of a comonomer are between the units of the other comonomer. That is called the number average sequence length. In the example shown here, there are six ethylene units between propene units and five propene units between E units. The triad sequence can be related with the number average sequence length by the following equations. NEP is the number of ethylene units between P units that are related with triads centered in ethylene. The another equation shows the number of sequences of propene between ethylene units, NPE, that are related with triads centered in propylene units. More information about the number average sequence length can be seen here. If we have two monomers, 0 and 1, in this example, we have six sequences of one unit, two sequences of two units, two sequences of three units, and two sequences of four units. The number average sequence length is given by the product of the number of sequences of each type by the number of units divided by the sum of the number of sequences, as it is shown in those equations. Triads can also give information about the monomer reactivity ratio. Let's first remember what the monomer reactivity ratio is. When there is a copolymerization reaction between monomers E and P, 
the growing chain ended in monomer E has two possibilities, to react with a monomer E or with a monomer P. In the first case, there will be a homopolymerization reaction with the rate constant KEE. -E. And in the second case, a copolymerization reaction with the rate constant KEP. The same occurs with a growing chain terminated by monomer P. It can copolymerize with E in the case the rate constant will be KPE, or it can homopolymerize with the rate constant KPP. The monomer reactive reg ratio is the ratio between the homopolymerization and the copolymerization rate constants as it is shown in those equations. The monomer reactive ratios are related with the diode sequences by the following equations. Re is equal to 2 times diad EE divided by the asymmetric diad multiplied by X. X is the ratio of the molar amount of monomers E and P in the feed. On the other hand, RP is equal to 2 times X multiplied by the PP diad, all divided by the diad PE plus EP. Diads are related to triads by the following equations. Diad EE is equal to the sum of triad EEE -E -E plus half the asymmetric triad centered in E. The asymmetric diad EP plus PE is equal to the sum of the triad PEP plus the asymmetric triad centered in E plus EPE -E plus half of the asymmetric triad centered in P. Diad PP is equal to the sum of the triad PPP plus half of the symmetric triad centered in P. The monomer reactivity ratio is an important parameter because it gives the relation of different monomers that must be put in the reactor to obtain a determined amount of, mo of monomers in the copolymer. In a more general way, if we have monomers A and B, the equations are expressed as following. Normally, the asymmetric sequences as AB plus BA are simplified writing only AB or, or for the triad BAA plus AAB, it is written only BAA or AAB. But we must know that it is referring to both triads. The product of the comonomer reactivity radius RA, RB, is a function of the macrobian probability, PAB and PBA, as it is shown in the following equation. The statistical model Markov of first order said that in a copolymerization, the addition of each monomer depends on the last unit. This is also called the chain end model. In the next equations, we can see as those macrobian probabilities are related to triads. As triads can be calculated from the carbon-13 NMR spectra, it is possible to calculate these probabilities from the triads. The reactivity radio product gives information about the type of copolymer. If this product is zero, the copolymer is alternated because the probability to have homopolymerization is null. If the product is one, there is the same probability to have the homopolymerization than the copolymerization reaction. So the copolymer should be random. Finally, if the product is much higher than 1 and Ra and Rb are higher than 1, the copolymer tends to be in block 
because the homopolymerization reactions have much higher probability than the copolymerization. Now that we have seen all what it can be calculated from carbon-13 NMR spectrum, we are going to see the influence of a copolymer structure on the spectra. The complexity of carbon-13 NMR spectra uh, increases from a homopolymer to a copolymer. For example, when we have a high density polyethylene where there is not branching, all the carbons, CH2, are all equivalent. So the spectrum has just one peak of resonance. In the presence of other monomers, as for example propene, that has three different carbon atoms, where one is asymmetric, the number of peaks increases. This increase not only depends on the type of monomer, but also on the way that this new monomer is inserted in the polymer chain. The complexity of the carbon-13 NMR spectrum increases from a stereoregular copolymer, it can be isotatic or syndiotatic, to a stereoirregular atatic, and increases still more from a regio-regular copolymer, where the asymmetric monomer propene inserts always in the same way to a regio irregular copolymer where the propene can have inversions. The most complex spectra are the one of low molecular weight polymers, where it can be detected the terminal groups. In this figure, it can be seen three carbon-13 spectra. The first one is of a stereoregular ethylene propylene copolymer. The second one is from an ethylene propylene rubber that is stereo and regio irregular. The last one is from an oil where besides the resonance due to irregularity, it can be detected terminal groups. We are going now to apply the equations that we have seen to vinyl copolymers. Vinyl copolymers are formed by a methylene carbon, a methene carbon that is asymmetric and a substituent. If X is a proton and Y is an alkyl group, in this case we have the polyolefins. Example, in an ethylene propylene copolymer. If in this Y is a methyl, if, for, for example, Y is an ester, we can have a copolymer in which one of the units is a polyacrylate. Or if one of the substituents is a nitrile, we can have a polyacrylonitrile unit, etc. All this family of copolymers will have three diads and six triads, as it can be seen in this figure. Depending on the sensitivity of the NMR instrument, effects due to larger sequences of atoms can sometimes be distinguished. For example, methylene may be sensitive not only to their closest neighbor, diads, but to consecutive neighbors achieving a tetrad resolution. Example of the tetrad XXXX or X, 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 Y can be seen in this figure. The determination of the comonomer content in copolymers by carbon-13 NMR is also obtained from the triad resolution. Being two monomers, A and B, the amount of monomer E is given by the triads centered in A, and the amount of monomer B by the triad centered in B. The percentage of if each monomer is given by the molar fraction of each monomer multiplied by 100. 
In this slide, it is also resumed in a more general way the number average sequence length and reactivity radius of each monomer and the equation relating the monomers with the, their triads. Randall, in a very complete work, related the triads with carbon-13 NMR integrals of ethylene-1 olefin copolymer, being the one olefin from propylene to one octene, and we extended it to one decene. The results are in the next table. The integrals called by letter T related with the triads are not individual integrals, but integral from an area of the spectra. Here, there are shown a spectra of ethylene propylene and ethylene one butene copolymers with the letters A to H over the resonances, indicating the respective areas corresponding to the integrals of the table already shown. Sometimes it's more convenient to calculate the integral from an area and not individual ones to minimize errors due to overlapping. In this slide, the integral areas for ethylene-1-exene, ethylene-1-octene, and ethylene-1-decene are shown. Now we are going to see how to calculate the amount of comonomers, the number average sequence length, and the reactivity radius of a copolymer using the equations shown in the table. The way to obtain the equations relating the triads and the integrals will be shown in another presentation. In this first exercise, you must calculate by the Randall method the percentage of comonomers in mole and mass, the number average sequence length, and the reactivity radius of each monomer of the ethylene propene copolymer, knowing that 0.5 mole per liter of propylene and 0.10 mole per liter of ethylene were put in the feed. First of all, we define the integral areas from A to H in accordance with the spectrum of an ethylene propylene shown again here. Then you must calculate the integrals of each area from the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. Then we apply the equations of an ethylene propylene copolymer relating triads and integrals shown in the table. We substitute the integral for the values, obtaining the relative value of each triad. From these values, we calculate the triad molar fraction, dividing each individual value by the total. And if we multiply by 100, we can also have the percentage of triads. Then we replace the triad molar fraction, or the percentage, in the equations and we obtain the amount of each monomer in the copolymer. In this case, we have an ethylene propylene copolymer with 8% of propylene and 92% of ethylene. NMR gives the molar fraction or molar percentage, but if we want to know the mass fraction or mass percentage, we have to multiply the molar amount of each monomer by the mass of the monomer. In this case, we multiplied A by the weight of propene, that is 42 grams, and 92 by the weight of ethylene unit, that is 28 grams, as it is shown in the example. So this particular copolymer has 11.5 weight percent of propylene and 88.5 weight percent of ethylene. The number average of sequence lengths is obtained using the specific equations for that. In this case, we have a copolymer with around one unit of propene between, in average, 11 units of ethylene. In the same way, to calculate the monomer relativity radius, the diads in the equation must be replaced by the amount of triads. X 
being the ratio of ethylene and propylene in the feed given by the exercise. 0 0.1 mole for ethylene and 0 0.5 mole for propylene. The result shows an ethylene reactivity ratio of 49 and a propylene reactivity ratio of 0. This means that ethylene is much more reactive than propylene. The homopolymerization of ethylene is favored over its copolymerization and that copolymerization of propylene with ethylene is favored over the propylene homopolymerization. This is why there is much more ethylene than propylene in the copolymer even though the amount in the feed was the opposite. Exercise 2 is done in the same way than the first one. This time it is asked to calculate by the Randall method the percentage of comonomer in mole and mass, the number average sequence length and the reactivity radius of each monomer of the ethylene one xene copolymer below. Knowing that 0.187 mole per liter of one xene and 0.11 mole per liter of ethylene were put in the feed. The integral areas from A to H in accordance with the spectrum of an ethylene one xene are defined as it is shown here. The integrals are assigned to the different areas and the equation for the ethylene one exine copolymers used. The results are the following. The amount of one exine in the copolymer is 12.3 in mole percent and 28.1 in weight percent. And the amount of ethylene 87.7 in mole percent and 71.9 in weight percent. There is an average of one unit of exine between seven units of ethylene. The reactivity ratio for ethylene is 11.4, meaning that the homopolymerization of ethylene is preferred to the copolymerization and the reactivity ratio for one xin is 0.036, meaning that when the last unit of the growing chain is one xin, it reacts mainly with ethylene and very little with one xin. Now that we have learned how to use all these equations to take quantitative information from the carbon-13 NMR spectra, in the following class, we are going to see how to calculate the equations that relate triads with integrals.